Today on Eagle Nation News, Reese Ranser takes on the topic of distracted driving in an interesting fashion. How do prosper students hold up in a texting and driving simulation? Mr. Berliner, the engineering and architecture teacher here at Prosper High School, recently went down to Houston to help with hurricane recovery efforts. Jake Fine reports on Berliner's experience of giving back. And finally, Sola Kantai sits down with the newest boy band in real life to uncover what led to their stardom. All this and more today on Eagle Nation News. Live from Prosper, Texas, this is Eagle Nation News. Good afternoon, Prosper High School. Today is Wednesday, November 1st. I'm Jake Fine. I'm Sola Kantai. And I'm Christina Folsom. We start today's show with more on the terrorist attack that happened in New York. Christina, you have more? Yesterday, a man purposely drove through a bicycle path, killing eight civilians and injuring 12 more. The mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio, called it an intentional act of terrorism, and ISIS has claimed responsibility for the attack. The annual Stuff the Bus Drive is back in full swing. Each Prosper ISD school will collect canned food items and then stuff an actual school bus that is sent to the Bethlehem Place to help provide food for the less fortunate. Classes will begin collecting canned food items on Monday, November 6th and end on Friday, November 10th. Now we send it over to Reese Ranzer who took some Prosper students to the arcade to prove the consequences of texting and driving. Each day in the United States, approximately nine people are killed and more than a thousand injured in crashes that are reported to involve a distracted driver. Some states even made a law to not use handheld devices while driving, but that doesn't stop some people from doing it. Two high school students tested to show just how difficult texting and driving is, even on an arcade game. Bryce Chatterton and Kaysen Mullins decided they were up for the challenge and were ready to begin. The object of the test was they each had to drive the race car and text each other at the same time. Yeah, it was pretty difficult to uh, text and drive even when we were playing the game. I was trying to text uh, my buddy Bryce, and it was pretty difficult. I can't even imagine what it would be like in a real car. They had me go to main event and see if I could text Kaysen back while driving on the little game. And it was probably one of the most difficult things I've done in my entire life, you know. Even with the game, it was really difficult. Last summer, I was in a car accident, and the driver was texting. Texas Governor Greg Abbott just recently signed into law a measure that bans texting while driving across the state. This new law doesn't just include texting, it's any data. So you can't use it to check something on the internet or social media or anything like that. It's supposed to be hands-free at all times. Keep in mind this new law and be safe while you are driving. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Reese Ranzer. Thank you, Reese. After this commercial break, we highlight Mr. Berliner, a prosper teacher who found himself in the middle of Hurricane Harvey. While most of us were unable to feel the effects of Hurricane Harvey directly, Mr. Berliner, a teacher here at Prosper, joined the relief efforts in Houston as a part of the Air National Guard. Jake Fine reports. Hurricane Harvey, one of the strongest hurricanes to hit the U.S. coast. Over 50 inches of rain dumped on Texas, 30 people dead, and one Prosper teacher in the middle of it all. Uh, I've been teaching the engineering class for eight years now, so I have a pretty good idea what's going on there. Mr. Berliner has been teaching at Prosper for three years. He grew up in a military family and found himself moving from place to place. Once he became a teacher, he wanted to follow in his family's legacy and joined the Air National Guard. 
I mean, what's called the Air National Guard, which is the old school one week in a month and two weeks in the summer. Uh, so we go out to the base in Fort Worth. A lot of what we do is about training, making sure people are ready, making sure equipment is ready, and preparing for basically what just happened to us. Harvey hit on August 28th, and Mr. Berliner was sent down to Houston on the night of the 29th, where he stayed for two weeks, and all of his training was finally put to the test. Uh, that first week, we were flying missions 24 hours. Uh, so we set up 24-hour ops. Everybody went on 12-hour shifts. Uh, we had planes in the air the very first day. So what they did is they loaded up our planes in Fort Worth. We put troops and supplies on them. We flew them into the Houston area and dropped them off to help out in whatever they needed to do. And then we actually air evac'd uh, people who needed to get out of Houston. And we brought over 2,000 people out of Houston. As Mr. Berliner helped those in need in Houston, school was in full swing here at Prosper. And although Mr. Berliner wasn't here, his presence was still felt in his students. Well, you know, you know, we come in every day. We knew that Hurricane Harvey was happening in Houston. And knowing that our teacher was going down to help, it was just a great thing to know. I mean, he's a great guy, and I wouldn't have anybody else but him. Although it is in Mr. Berliner's nature to be humble, and he wouldn't call himself a hero, he was still able to understand the gravity of his work. It really makes you feel fulfilled. Uh, like I said, we trained, and I've, I haven't responded to anything in nine years. And so when they finally do call you up and, and you see all the people that you get to help, it really justifies all the time I had to spend away from my family, all the weekends I spent training. And it's kind of drudgery to study the same things over and over and over again until the day comes when you get to use it to help people out. And it's really, it's very fulfilling. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Jake Fine. Each year, over 12 million people are diagnosed with cancer. Lisa Sanders and Kaylin Rice have to deal with the effects every day. And as Lisa says, it's the little things that help her get through it all. The first day I was just really nervous. They tell you everything that can go wrong. And I knew what I looked like at the time. And then it's just, it's just, you're scared. Lisa Sanders, a parent in the Prosper community, has gone through the same struggle as millions of others. On March 28th, 2017, she got the news, the day before her daughter's birthday. It was kind of a step process because I went in because I found something. None, no one in my family has cancer for several generations. Nobody does. So, um, And then I went in and they, they check and then they do a mammogram and then they told me that day that they believed it was and that it was in my lymph nodes. And then I had to come back two days later to get like a biopsy and then a few days later, they call you and confirm, and I was at work. Cancer is the second leading cause of death in the U.S., with breast cancer filling one-third of those cases. However, Lisa Sanders is not the only member of the Prosper community with a common cancer. Kaylin Rice has familial adenotomous polyposis, which is a type of colon cancer. I grow precancerous polyps in my GI tract. And so because of that, I had to have most of my colon taken out. As you get older, you get more polyps. And as time progresses, that's when you have more surgeries. And then eventually, I mean, even preventative surgery, you finally die of cancer because they can't take anything else out. I did chemotherapy. I did eight treatments um, every two weeks. My first four was um, <clears throat> a different type. They call it the red devil because it's intense. And then I did another kind for another four and I start radiation today. Lisa and Kaylin are two of the 11 million cancer survivors in the United States today. Although they're still fighting, they remain optimistic. If you would like to help people that are going through the same struggle, you can donate during Pink Out Day. The money goes to real people like Lisa and Kaylin. My obstacle would be, you know, I'll have a complication or they'll find a polyp or a test will come back in a way they don't want it to out of nowhere. And it's kind of just like, it, you know, it just hits you and you kind of have to deal with it at that point. You know, I have a great support network uh, and it, they, they help me through things when I need help. Again, it happens so fast and in the beginning you're, you're quite numb still. You're just trying to get through it, you know, because it was just thrown at you. All of a sudden they're just telling you what you need to do if you want to live. But you never know what someone's battle is. Don't make me cry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, just all that stuff that I just feel grateful. And when I got my nails done the other day, he thought I was a supermodel because of my cool haircut. <laughs> so it's those little things that get people through. I'm Cameron Silva, reporting for Eagle Nation News. Prosper. After this commercial break, Christina Folsom has the results from Van's recent UIL Area B competition. 
Student Council will be collecting canned goods on stage during all lunches November 6th through 10th for Stuff the Bus. Prosper Theaters performing The Balkan Women and The Women of Lockerbie in the Prosper High School Auditorium on the 9th, 10th, and 11th of November at 6.30 p.m. There is also a matinee on the 11th at 2 p.m. Tickets are $5 for students. Young Life will be hosting a bonfire on Saturday, November 4th. See Ms. Cates or Ms. Werner for details. Now we kick it to Christina Folsom, who is standing by with an update on band. So this past weekend, the Prosper Band got second place in the UIL Area B contest, meaning that of all the schools in Frisco, Little Elm, and Plano, the Prosper High School Band received second place. On top of that, the band program advanced to state for the first time in its history. Congratulations to the Prosper Band, and we wish you the best of luck moving into the state championships. Make sure you're following us on Twitter at Eagle Nation News for more updates. Sola Kantai sat down with In Real Life, winners of ABC's reality show Boy Band, to discuss going through the show and continuing on in their careers after. Hey you guys, I'm here with In Real Life, winners of the ABC show Boy Band. Guys, tell me, what was your experience like on that show? How does, how does the whole thing work out? It was definitely something unique because we haven't seen a show like this before and um, I, we were all very excited for this like when we got called for it and you know this is just like a huge step into our career so like it was like you couldn't, it's like no brainer you had to do it you know what I mean? So, yeah. Had you guys always planned on trying to join a band? Were you trying to pursue solo careers or how did you end up trying out for boy band? Yeah for me it was, I felt like I always wanted to be in a band because I knew I wanted to do music but at the same time I didn't want to do it alone and being able to be in a boy band you're traveling with people all the time and you're always you always have someone there to come for you or just to be your friend and that's the best thing in the world to travel with my friends. When you found out who the final five was what was your what were each of your initial reactions? Yeah. I, was like, <laughs> I was just really shocked because it was like they um they did this thing where they they didn't want to give away who's in the band but we had these silhouettes behind us so they like edited the silhouettes to not look like us so my silhouette didn't look like me mm -hmm. and i looked at it and i was like uh, yeah that's probably not me and i didn't see anything that looked like me so i was sitting there and i was like all right see you guys like it's been really fun <laughs> um, and they called me and i was like i'm really, really <laughs> yeah. so did it take a long time for you guys to kind of develop a friendship like sergio said it's unique in a way where seeing competition reality shows are one winner so if you're in a competition with someone, you're like, ah, oh, like, right. you, know, you have that right. in the back of your mind. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you have that in the back of your mind. And uh, for this show, there was five winners ultimately, so we all knew we were gonna be in a group. And I think, like, everybody, nobody really, like, had strikes towards anybody. Like, we were all, always cheering someone on because there was a possibility oh. they would be in the group. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been in a group for only two months. Yeah. You've already released a single, already released a music video. What, what can we expect? What's coming next? Honestly, just more music, more material. Uh, we have some Christmas stuff going on, a holiday Ooh. single, holiday cover. Some music that we're really excited to share. How do you guys hang out outside of rehearsals? You know, how do you develop that kind of friendship, that bond? Mm -hmm. A lot of video games. <laughs> a lot of video games. <laughs> yeah, we hang out with each other all the time. Like, we were, um, I mean, we've been together basically this entire time, mm -hmm. but we were in a house in LA for two weeks straight. And so when we weren't rehearsing and stuff, which was a lot of time, we would just hang out together, we'd play video games. Drew and I bought two wooden swords, mm. but we would just like <laughs> play like, that on the back of the So you guys are just normal teenagers. Yeah. Just yeah. Totally normal teenagers. The videos are so embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. Thank well, you. thank you guys so much. Thank you. For thank being you. here. I thank hope you your, yeah, I hope your tour continues and wish you guys the best of success. Thank, thank you so, so much. much. Prosper took on Frisco Independence last night in the opening round of the volleyball playoffs. Maddie Whitmire going to set the ball right into Hope Gramley's strike zone for the first points of the night for Prosper. Haley Killinger gets in on the action here, spiking the ball over the net for a kill. Set by Whitmire way over in the left corner, and Sierra Hecht puts it away. Kenyon sets up Orr for the kill, but is instead met by a wall of Prosper defenders. Again, Whitmire to Killinger, this time just a little tap over the net, catching the Knights off guard. Remember that left corner from Hecht? Same place, same result. Amaya Marshall goes up for the kill here, but is met by Killinger and Whitmire, who send the ball back their way. Prosper wins in straight sets and advances on to the next round, where Highland Park awaits them. That's all I have for you today from the Eagle Zone. I'm Brandon Bonaparte. Back to you, Christina. Thank you, Brandon. Let's get a look at the meetings happening this week. 
French Club has a meeting today during Eagle Time in room 1112. UIL Computer Applications has a meeting tomorrow during Eagle Time in room 2233. Psychology Club has a meeting tomorrow as well during Eagle Time in room 2213. And Mu Alpha Theta has a mandatory meeting on Friday during Eagle Time in room 1132. That's going to do it for our show today. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Sola Kantai. I'm Christina Folsom. And I'm Jake Fine. Live long and prosper.